All right, time to go to another movie. This was going to be at the Ragtag Cinema. And it is a kid's movie. What? Yeah, the movie is from a foreign land. And it is a cartoon that dares to ask the question, what if a bear and a mouse had a mutually uh, beneficial, um, you know, living arrangement? So, the movie is called Ernest and Christina Go to Gerbilville, or something along those lines. But, yeah. I never saw a trailer for anything, but when I get back out to the car, I'll tell you what I thought about it. Yeah. I go to the movies. Who would have thought? So, here's my opinions. My opinions don't matter. Your opinions don't matter. What? We just put our opinions on the internet. It's what we do. As a culture. No one knows why we do it, but we can't seem to stop. So, for what it's worth, I am THE Joshua Lukoku, and these are mine. Yeah, Ernest and Christine, a trip to Jeribitia. <laughs> However you say that. Yeah, so this movie, I believe it is from France, is what it is. And these are cartoon characters. And uh, I looked at this isn't their first movie. What? They've had multiple of these Ernest uh, movies. And uh, Ernest is a bear. He's a grumpy guy. But he likes to play his fancy violin. He can play other things too, but he plays the violin. And uh, that is how he makes money for his uh, mouse uh, lover. Um, I think they're a couple. I, th they, I think this is what is implied. That this giant bear is in a relationship with this tiny lady mouse. So, I mean... Uh, I'm all for, you know, love and all that, but, uh, I'm not sure this would work. <laughs> if you know what I mean. So, <laughs> so, but this movie, it is for the, the children, and they love them. And, and here, here's the issue. Now, uh, the, the Ernest, the bear, he wakes up from the hibernation, does, they don't have any food. Why? Because he makes the money by playing his violin on the street corner. So, uh, the mouse goes to get his violin, but through a series of unfortunate events, the, the violin uh, breaks. Oh no! And it can only be repaired in the bear's hometown where he grew up. But, uh, he doesn't want to go back there, you know? He, he took all the, the time and energy to move away and make a different life. With a mouse wife. That sort of thing. So, but she's like, I'm going to go get it fixed. She, and she runs away. And he like, wakes up from his nap or whatever. And he's like, he finds a note or something like that. He's like, he's like ah! And so he hops in the van. Apparently she can't drive the van. Probably because she can't reach the pedals on account of being a tiny mouse. So, but she is, you know, gotten rides and they leave her on the top of a mountain, you know, and there's a snowstorm. What? So, but anyway, I don't want to give away everything that's going on. So, he is resisted to going to his hometown, but they end up going anyway. So, there's this whole thing about when he grew up, there's lots of music in his town, but now, wouldn't you know it, music has been outlawed. What? Of all the things. He loves music, you know, and so... And there's this whole weird thing about there's the underground resistance, you know, and and birds... The police, like, basically just chase birds around because birds are always tweeting. Like, you can't have multiple notes. You can only do one note, is the thing. So... And then... So there's this resistance, you know, and all that sort of thing. And then it turns out that Ernest, his dad, is the judge in the town who has made music illegal. What? And uh, there was this whole thing about how he wants Ernest to follow in his footsteps, you know, this sort of stuff. It's like, you know, his mom's the town doctor, you know, that sort of thing. And she's kind of funny. But. So this is the story, you know, and I won't tell you anything more that goes on with it. But, you know, there's family drama, and there's uh, social 
commentaries about making things illegal and underground resistance against that sort of stuff. So that's what the movie's basically about. I'll talk about the, I mean, I don't know French, so I'm guessing that it was fine. The voice acting, I couldn't really tell, but, um, the, the music, it was kind of funny. It was mostly, you know, it kind of seemed kind of, I, well, what I would describe as like polka music is what most of the music seems to be, but <laughs> that's fine, you know, but <laughs> then there's, um, the animation stuff. It looks hand drawn. Don't know if it actually was, but it's all it's very uh, sketchy. But in you know, not meaning sketchy as in you don't trust it, but sketchy like as uh, a sketch, you know, but not a comedy sketch like a an art sketch, you know. So that sort of thing. But it's cool, you know. And sometimes it's uh, the backgrounds aren't animated as much, you know, around the uh, so okay, kind of can give off a little bit of a a comic strip vibe, you know, you see sometimes that sort of thing. But I thought it was—I thought it was good. I thought they did a good job with the animation. And uh, otherwise, the movie's charming, you know. So, I mean, it's safe for the children. So it's charming, you know. So, uh, yeah, there's nothing wrong with the movie per se. So, <laughs> anyway, that's all I'm gonna talk about this one. Yeah. Okay, those are my first thoughts after seeing. Ernest and Celestine go to Ghibli-ish, or whatever it's called. <laughs> and I'm going to throw those thoughts and opinions up on the thoughts and opinions pile. They'll soon be buried by everybody else's thoughts and opinions, you know. But, uh, yeah. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the bell, tell me your opinions, put them in the comment section, you know. Don't forget to feed your cat. And obviously, you know, when you go on an adventure with your friend, don't get into too much trouble.